Hi everyone, my name is Long Chen. Today I'll talk about my project about predicting fusion of saccharide valves in normal hearing listeners with a physiologically based model. First, some background about valves. Valves are a type of speech sound which is produced by comparatively open configuration of the vocal tract with vibration of the vocal cords. The important features of the valves can be seen from the spectrum. The narrowly spaced lines are harmonics with spacing determined by fundamental frequency, F0 or pitch. The spectral peaks are formants, which are used to, to discriminate valves, especially the first and second formants, F1 and F2. Here's an example valve space. X axis is F1 and the Y axis is F2. You can see that each valve has a focus mapping on this space. Note that the valve spaces can vary across listeners and with contacts, such as F0. In a recent study, Reese and Mollis showed something interesting about dichotic valve identification. Two different valves were dichotically presented at the two years through headphones like this. Fundamental frequencies of the two valves could be the same or different. The subjects were not told that the two valves were always presented and they could choose one or two valves. The study found that when the fundamental frequencies are different, the subjects usually correctly identify both valves. But when the fundamental frequencies are the same, the subject usually identify the two, uh, only one valve, that is, the subject fused the two valves. And sometimes the fused valves was, uh, was not one of the valves presented. Reese and Mollis used a general spectrum average model to predict these fused percepts in human listeners. Here, we extend the concept to a more physiologically realistic model based on individualized valve maps to predict responses in the dichotic valve identification task. In this study, there were seven valves used, as shown here. The symbols are what we presented to the subjects, and the example pronunciation is underlined in the word by the symbol. The subjects were trained to correctly identify with these valves with at least 80% 80, 80 correct in the left and right ear separately before they continue. Four of the valves, circled here, are used in the dichotic valve pair stimuli. All possible combinations of these four target valves with the same or different fundamentals were presented. The subjects were told that they could be presented with either one or two valves, and their task was to select which one or two. All subjects were tested remotely. The results are shown in the form of a confusion matrix, which helps us to visualize responses versus stimuli. Each column shows a specific valve pair presented, and each row represents the percentage of specific response combinations. A darker shading represents to a higher percentage of that response. For example, this cell shows that with the E and A pair, the subject responded 84% responded with A alone. Therefore, the confusion matrix can be divided into three parts. The first part indicates that the subject had fused perception because only one valve was selected in response to the dichotic valve pair. The second part indicates unfused perception outside the target categories. The third part indicates unfused perception within the target categories. However, only the box cells means that the subject correctly identified both valves in the valve pair. For the specific study, when the two valves has the, had the same uh, fundamental frequencies, the subject fused most of the valve pairs consistent with the previous study. However, we do notice that sometimes the subject did not fuse the valve pairs. This could be due to a noisier testing environment than in the previous study, as more noise could decrease fusion. When the F0s differ between the two valves, the subjects fuse few of the valve pairs, consistent with the previous study. We use a physiologically based model to simulate neural responses to valves. This is a diagram of the ascending auditory pathway. There are two important levels in the model. The first is the auditory nerve model here. The second level is the inferior colliculus, located in the middle of the auditory pathway. IC neurons are known to be sensitive to amplitude modulations, here, we chose to use benzoprest model neurons, which are supposed to respond stronger to spectral peaks. There are 90 characteristic frequencies used throughout the model 
logarithmically spaced between 125 and 4 kilohertz. There are also 16 time constants used for the IC model, each sensitive to different modulation rates. Here is an example model response to Monaro app. Brighter indicates stronger responses. The strong responses here also line up with formants of A as shown here with the dashed lines. Now I will talk about how the model neural responses are used to predict human performance. There are two steps. The first step is to use AN model output to determine if the two valves have the same or different F zeros. The decision variable here is adapted from Chintampelli et al., originally from Mattis and Hewitt. First, cross-correlation were calculated with AN model outputs of the two channels that have the same CF. Then, the cross-correlation were summed up across CFs to obtain the pooled cross-correlation function. If the magnitude of the highest peaks in the spectrum of the pooled cross-correlation function exceeded our criteria, then the F0s were determined to be the same, otherwise were considered different, and they will be treated differently in step 2. In the second step, if the F0s of the two valves were the same, the IC model outputs of the two valves was averaged for all CFs and time constants. Otherwise, outputs of the two channels were analyzed independently. Template matching was used to predict valve or valves selected. In this talk, I'll focus on the same F0 condition. Use the valve space again to remind you of the valve stimuli. For individualized valve space characterization, we use the 90 tokens, shown here with the small gray dots on the grid, including the ones on the edge. They were used to sample the entire valve space. Subjects were asked to identify each token as one of the seven valve options provided. For template matching, we calculate the difference between model neural responses to the dichotic valve pair and to each of the 90 tokens to find which token has the most similar responses to the test stimuli. Here's an example. This is a model neural responses to the ER pair compared to the template responses for token number one located here. We calculate the distance between the two and also for all tokens. And here is a plot that shows the distance between the ER pair and all the sample tokens. The lighter color indicates a smaller distance. And here is the winner token. Just to remind you again that here is the E and R located on the valve space. After we find the winner token, we look at how the subject characterizes this token according to their valve map. Here is an example. The subject identified this token 58% as A and 48% as A. So that's the final output of the model. Here are the behavioral data and the model prediction of one of our normal hearing subjects for same F0 condition. The subject's data are on the left and the model prediction on the right. In general, the model was able to capture the general response pattern for the subject when the F0 is lower. For higher F0, the model made more mistakes, especially when U was presented. Here are the data and prediction when the F0s are different. In general, the model was able to predict both valves correctly, just like the subject. In conclusion, the model can predict some fused percepts of human listeners with normal hearing. And we have several things in mind to try. For example, we definitely would like to explore why the model is, used to, is using different strategies for different f zeros. We will also explore different binaural combinations and try other decision variables. We're also interested in modeling the fused perception of listeners with hearing loss. With that, I would like to thank my lab, uh, especially my lab member who helped with remote testing, and my collaborator and the funding source. Thank you for your attention, and I'd like to take any questions.